wanted to take a moment tonight to talk about what I've been working on since I haven't posted uh, an update in a while, at least a key switch related update. I've designed this keyboard PCB. It's a uh, 65%, uh, but it's got 70 keys, so it's more like a 68 or 69%. It's not quite a 70%. <laughs> uh, I called it the Risky Board 70. Let's actually have a, a look at the 3D view because this rat's nest is kind of a mess. There we go. So let's start by a few a few things that uh, kind of bother me in regular keyboards, uh, especially the um, the smaller ones, like the 60%. Like, I don't mind missing the F keys. Who cares, right? That doesn't matter. What bugs me is the escape key. I use tilde and the escape key quite a lot, and it would really annoy me to have them be in the same key. So I uh, on my board, I put it's got a dedicated escape key um, because I just I just like whacking it in the corner. I guess it's too much ingrained into my uh, my body at this point. Plus, it's nice to have uh, an escape key that that like that's off on its own. Uh, like I like to have an oversized escape key because I mean it's got this whole region over there in the corner of most keyboards. Why not? Um, so this will let me keep playing like I always play. It's got the arrow keys down here and three uh, macros. So you might be wondering, did I skip the, the macro key up here because the rotary encoder here? No, no, I, I did not intend to have a macro key here because one thing that I do on occasion, even, my, even with my tank TK elbow, my tank keyless, is I hit the insert key by accident when, I'm, when I mean to hit backspace. <laughs> So by having an empty space here, I'm ensuring that I don't accidentally do that with my own board. So that's basically the, the layout. There's uh, another little feature of the uh, layout that I want to talk about, and that is the dual space keys. Now I've called them L space and R space, but really this left one or the right one is intended to be a backspace key. Um, just because I, I used to have a keyboard way back in the day that was uh, like that, that had a backspace key on the, um, on the right. Uh, and I want to be able to do that. But if you don't change the firmware, it's just going to be, you know, two spaces bars instead of one big one. Other than that, it's basically the same amount of space as a normal space bar. I've got two function keys here. I've got func one and func two. But in reality, when I uh, when I print out the keycaps, it's actually going to be fun and then more fun. Because <laughs> that's just how I roll. Uh, I've got a... Uh, STM32 F4 here. That's probably overkill. It's got two USB-C ports, and you might be wondering why two. Well, this one goes over to your PC, right? And this one is just to provide power. So if you're like me and you have a bunch of extra, um, like USB-C chargers for various phones, you can actually pump power in, and you should be able to get 15 watts out of that. But why do you need to pump power into your freaking keyboard? Risk why, right? Well, there's two reasons. The first reason is it has an integrated USB hub, which is this little chip here. So it's going to have two USB-A ports here and then one off to the side. And this one off to the side is just so you can use something like one of those little pin pad, you know, pin generators like a YubiKey or whatever. It's really handy to have it on the side of your keyboard. It's one thing I miss because uh, when I had a laptop, it was right there on the side of the laptop. It's really nice to have a USB port on the side of your keyboard. That's that's all that's all that is to it. <laughs> it's not much more complicated than that. Uh, so there's three ports uh, that you can use. They're only 2.0 ports because doing USB 3.0 is a huge pain in the butt. It requires a four-layer board and lots of um, stuff like these wibbly wobbly lines here. You see that? That is uh, trace length matching, uh, and that's a new skill that I've picked up. <laughs> and I had to do it over here too. Well, it's on the other side of the board. See these little um, traces that go from like one via to the other? They're actually going across a um, a ground plane. That you can't see here in this render because I, I hit control B to remove the uh, copper fill before I generated this view. <laughs> but there's normally a ground plane here and these bridge across it. And what that ground plane does is it covers the USB traces, which are really thick. And that's kind of necessary according to the USB spec. It should give me the necessary 70 impedance that it's looking for going all the way out to this USB port. But we'll see. We shall see. It might be too noisy, probably be fine. The other thing I did here on this board is I've taken all unused pins and I've broken them out in the back. So the keyboard is kind of like its own little microcontroller board. So you've got all these extra pins here that you can do whatever you want with. Two analog pins, uh, PB0 and PB1 are analog pins. I've also added the UART. It's got its own dedicated RX and TX. So if you wanted to hook up some sort of UART device, you can. Also, it's got a quick connector. What I don't know why it didn't draw. I did add a 3D model, but it doesn't like it. Uh, so a quick connector is an I2C connector. 
that's been standardized by um, SparkFun, uh, and it should be hooked up properly with all the resistor with the uh, resistors and whatnot the way it's supposed to. And another thing I'd like to note is PB3 through uh, like I think one, two, three, four, five, up to uh, PA7 here. These pins are actually I2S pins, so you can get the full I2S, full spectrum, uh, full duplex uh, input and output if you want to go that route. So that's my keyboard. Uh, more to cover, actually. <laughs> it's got WS, WS2812B-B uh, LEDs in it. And the reason why I went with this particularly large one is because they were all out of the minis when I started putting this together, like the mini version. So I went with the big the big one just because JLC PCB had, happened to have those in stock. Now, since I've made this, they actually got more stock, so it probably was a waste of time. But the good news is that the big version of, you know, the B-B doesn't use any more power than the mini version. They're both 12 milliamps, which is considerably less than like the 25, the uh, regular old 20S, uh, WS2812B used to take. Uh, still, that's that's 830 something milliamps, which is more than the 500 you guaranteed by the USB spec. So I actually have some pin, like one of these pins, like this one right here, I think, uh, can detect, can be used to detect whether or not there's power plugged in. And if there's not power plugged in, these babies are gonna run a half, maybe even a third of their normal brightness. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> we'll see when I get it. Uh, I've also incorporated a buzzer. This is of course to make it so that you can have every keep rest play a fart sound, of course. Uh, actually, the uh, the real plan is to make it so that whenever I press the space bar, it plays like a Mario jump sound. And whenever I press the enter key, it plays like the coin pickup sound, right? Because who doesn't want that? <laughs> I've got a giant rotary encoder that I haven't I haven't coded anything for yet. I kind of need to get this board in order to code it, so I'm patiently waiting. Uh, a few other features. There's a 5 volt output, so if you've got something plugged in, you can actually use that for the uh, GPIO pins. Get your nice little power uh, power on. Uh, this reset switch is not going to be populated by default, and this J9 is also reset. I've got 3.3 power. What else is there? Oh, yes, I've got my SD link header here, which also won't be populated. But if you want to debug the board like a, like I do normally, you can plug in an SD link. This J7 is uh, the boot configuration. This is going to require, this is basically this, only this prototyping board is going to ever have this. So when I finally make the final version, you're not going to have this here. It'll just be hardwired. Um, this lets me switch the boot mode so that I can go from DFU flashing, which is like flash over USB versus flash over SD link. For regular old people, you'll want to flash over USB. But for me, it's quicker and more convenient to be able to switch it to, to flashing via the DFU method. That's all that is. And finally, <laughs> the coolest thing I think is this, if you, let's follow this trace, right? If we follow this trace, we'll see where it goes. Do, do, do. It's the out pin of the very last LED in the chain. So if you wanted to, you can plug in, uh, it's got a header pin here, but it really, you probably just want to put like some uh, screw in headers or just solder directly to this, to these little ports. You can plug in another chain of WS2812 uh, compatible LED lights. So you can use your keyboard, you know, control your Christmas lights display if you wanted to. You know, whatever you want to do, you could take this output and then wrap some LED light strip around your keyboard if you wanted to, or have it control your desk. Um, I actually planned if we, let's go into 3D mode here. So what I was thinking about doing, and I don't know if it's going to work out, we'll try it. But I've added two little accessory port holes in the case right here and here. And I was going to make a nice arch. I was going to print out a nice arch and I was going to put some WS2812 LEDs on there and have a nice little rainbow uh, that you know, changes based on like my typing speed or any other thing. Uh, so that's what I've been working on. There's, there's another thing I've been working on as well. Let's go over to OpenSCAD for a second. See this big gap here, this big empty spot. So this is obviously just the keyboard and I'm still working on the magnet locations. That's not where they're gonna go. You know, that's just, I just threw them in there real quick. I don't know where they're gonna go. We'll see. Um, so this is what the keyboard case is gonna look like, the top plate anyway. Um, you can see it's kind of thick, so that, that should dampen the sound a bit. Um, but I do plan to add a hollow out feature. If you want that real fox sound, you can generate a key keyboard top plate like that. Uh, but this big space in the middle, and I'm probably going to round these corners too, is going to be for a display. Now, I'm not going to reveal what kind of display it is, but you can see that it's pretty damned big. 
<laughs> uh, and the reason why I don't want to reveal it is I'm not sure it's going to work yet. <laughs> but uh, and now that I've got this cut out here, I'm like, well, what if they don't want the display? And now I'm going, oh, crap, what does it look like without it? And what they're going to see, you're going to see this. <laughs> you're going to see your microcontroller on your USB ports. So I'm probably going to have to come up with like a cover or something to cover that. Um, this is what the back looks like, in case you're wondering. And yes, I just threw this over here because there happened to be space. I want to see what it looks like with the Enig coating. That's all there is to it. It doesn't really need to be there. Um, I don't know. I was, I'm also probably going to fill all the back here with art and text or something cool. We'll see. This is just the prototype. And this is this is what I've been working on. Oh, there is a barrel jack. I didn't mention that. And this is just an alternate form of bringing power in. So if you do want to actually power like an enormous Christmas lights display, you could give this baby like a monstrously large 5 volt supply. Um, and I probably should mark this as 5 volt only somewhere because that's all it can take. If you put something bigger than that, you'll fry everything because this gets piped right into all the LEDs and the um, Hall effect sensors. Oh, and it also powers the um, these analog multiplexers down here. Um, so yeah, I haven't got a power regulation for 5 volt, but I've got the quick connector actually has its own dedicated uh, regulator uh, because I thought that would be nice. They were only like a few cents each. Why not? Right. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff like that. I've also made it so that if you wanted to, or if like I made a prototype that doesn't have uh, the LEDs populated, you can actually, there's a configurable, um, let's go to the other side so you can see it. I think it's in the back. Yeah, see these LED, LED bypass? I've got three of these. I got JP2 and JP1 over here. This is connected by default, but if you just cut it, what ends up happening is um, the, uh, God. The LED output from the microcontroller won't go here anymore. It'll go over here. So you need to, like, th this, you, you can just cut this and then join the one on the other side. And now this output port is just LED only. And all these down here will be skipped. And another thing you can do is if you do the right configuration, there's actually, uh, there's three of these. This is GP3, this is GP1, GP2. And with just the right configuration, you can make it so that the output is uh, a mirror of what's here. So if I wanted to make that, you know, rainbow arch be uh, exactly the same as the pattern down here, I can do that by bridging uh, one of these. And I'll document that when the time comes. That's actually not there in my early, I added that today. <laughs> so the final prototype will have that, but the one that's coming in the mail won't, won't have that feature. I just added that today, which is why this one says revision two. <laughs> but, you know, I had a very deep inspection of this today. And I, you know, because I'm nervous that I made mistakes. <laughs> Um, but I haven't seen any so far. The only thing I noticed was like this little trace here was like a perfect 90 degree angle. That's the only thing I found that I wanted to fix because technically traces are supposed to, you know, not have right angles. That's all it was. I just pulled it down just a smidge. That's the only thing I found with it. But of course, when it arrives, I'll plug it in and I'll like throw up the magic blue smoke. <laughs> we shall see. So yeah, that's what I've been working on it for the past few weeks. And man, it was a lot of work. Um, built-in USB hub, powerful STM32F4. It's got two crystals, uh, you know, the regular one, and it's got the, this one. It's not, it doesn't look like it's, it's not here in the image, but it's actually um, that um, real-time clock crystal, so it should accurately keep time. Uh, we'll see. And I made the crystals as close as possible. The USB chip also needed its own crystal. All sorts of fun things. 